Hi everybody, it's Terry Ryder from hotspotting.com.au bringing you this week's edition of Hotspot of the Week. And this week I've decided to do something a little bit different. Normally I focus on a particular location and talk about why you rate that location as one of the future or upcoming hotspots. This time I want to uh, focus on a trend in some of our smaller capital cities as I see it as significant, particularly in terms of looking ahead to 2019, which is almost upon us, and trying to determine what might be coming up in some of our major markets. Because it's certainly the case that there are going to be markets showing pretty good growth um, throughout the coming year uh, against the trend of what's happening in the two biggest cities, where obviously prices are trending downwards in Sydney and Melbourne, but other of our capital cities have different things happening and some of our major regional centres as well. So I want to focus on what's happening in the top end markets in three of our uh, smaller capital cities, uh, Adelaide, Canberra and Perth. And I think it's significant. Uh, these are two mar three markets that um, have been doing very different things to what we've seen in the two biggest cities over the last several years. Um, Sydney has boomed, Melbourne has boomed, but other capital cities in Australia certainly haven't. And um, but as those two biggest cities wind down, we're starting to see um, some positive trends in some of the other capital cities. Perth is very much doing the opposite to the two biggest cities. It's been in downturn, while Sydney and Melbourne have been booming, and now as the two biggest cities wind down, and um, we see evidence of price decline, and certainly in some parts of those markets, uh, Perth is actually moving into recovery mode. Canberra has always been solid, but look, showing promise of doing uh, better with price growth, in the coming year and uh, the same applies to Adelaide which has been chugging along very steadily showing very small to moderate growth over the last five years but not booming and uh, we think it's got uh, promise of doing better things in 2019. Now, one of the signals we think based on our research and our experience one of the things that points to better outcomes and higher price growth in Perth, Adelaide and Canberra next year is that in each case the top end market of those cities in 2018 has performed very strongly, far more strongly than the broader market has. Now what we know to be true that is that uh, up cycles in city markets often begin with the, the top end of the market with the, the million dollar suburbs and over time growth ripples out from there to the middle market and then to laterally to the, the outer end areas. In Melbourne right now, certainly Generally speaking, the Melbourne boom is over, but the outer ring subject is still very strong. Very strong demand there. Prices still rising in some of the, the cheaper outlying areas of the Melbourne metropolitan market. But the, the cycles for Melbourne and Sydney in both cases started with the top end suburb. So um, we think it's significant that uh, in Perth, the, the top end suburbs, the million dollar suburbs, have uh, shown strong growth in the last 12 months, far in excess of what we've seen in the broader market. Now, there's about two dozen Perth suburbs that have median prices above a million dollars in terms of the housing market. Um, and what the, the research shows is that all but two of those two dozen suburbs with million dollar median prices have prices higher than they were a year ago, and 15 of them have recorded um, annual growth of 5% or more, headed by uh, locations such as Claremont, which is up 15%, Netherlands is up 16%, Applecross 13%, Ardross 11%, City Beach 11%, North Fremantle 25%, and Subiaco 11%. So a number of those million dollar suburbs have double digit growth in the median prices. Most of them have grown at least 5%, several of them a lot more than that, at a time when the Perth market generally has prices that are, depending on whose figures you believe, are still slightly in the negative. Some sources say um, prices are pretty much plateaued out, no longer falling, and the Real Estate Institute of Western Australia, their latest figures have recorded small price growth in the Perth median um, for both October and then again for November. So the last two months are actually showing, according to their figures, a return to growth, but very minor growth, whereas the top end has done much, much better. Uh, why is it so? Well, the uh, Perth and Western Australian economies are moving into recovery, having been in downturn, jobs being created, the resources sector revitalising, 
uh, population growth numbers starting to improve, economic growth is lifting. And when that happens, uh, the first people to, to know about it and to feel the benefits of it are the people uh, who have businesses, perhaps people earning the bigger money, the higher income earners, and that starts to translate into demand for top end real estate. So that's what we're seeing in Perth at the moment. And we think it's the beginnings of a, a stronger up cycle, which we will see more of in 2019. Now there's also a noticeable movement in the top end of the Adelaide market. Um, most research, research sources in terms of annual price growth for the Adelaide market generally are talking you know, 2%, 3% the last 12 months. Um, very, very minor growth. Certainly a stronger position than we're now seeing in Sydney and Melbourne, but um, a long way short of a, what you might call a, a strong market or a boom market. But at the top end, again, the suburbs with um, medium prices above a million dollars have done much, much better than those average figures. Now, what we've found in our research is that suburbs such as Kensington Park, St George's, Henley Beach South, Hyde Park, Hazelwood Park, they're all suburbs with median house prices above a million dollars and they've all had median price growth of 20% or more in the last 12 months. Um, and other suburbs with um, median prices above a million dollars like Penunga, Norwood, Kensington Gardens, North Adelaide, they've all had median price growth in the last 12 months, about 10%. So again, we've seen that same trend that we've seen in, in Perth, that the top end has done much, much better than the general market. And we think um, given that the Adelaide economy is improving, there's some really positive things happening in that economy, that um, the market is, is starting to trend upwards and it's being led by the top end. Now finally, Similar things happening again. The third, the third city where this is evident is Canberra. Canberra's got just seven suburbs, median house prices above a million dollars, and and all but one of them has had uh, significant growth in their median prices in the last twelve months. Aquino has risen twenty percent. Uh, Red Hills up fifteen percent. Uh, Garran has risen seventeen percent. Deakin eleven percent. Griffith has grown ten percent. So these are all suburbs of medium prices above a million dollars in Canberra, and there's been substantial growth in those medium prices. Lynham, which is a suburb with a medium price a little bit below a million dollars, it's there in the 900,000s, it's also had big growth, it's up 14%. Yarra Lumla is the only one of the millionaire suburbs that has failed to record major medium price growth in Canberra in the last 12 months. Now Canberra is a very solid market, is always solid, uh, seldom booms, never crashes. Um, right now it's got, um, a very, again, as usual, a solid market, good sales activity, very low vacancies. Rental growth has been very strong in the last 12 months, both for houses and apartments. And um, we think on taking that in conjunction with the growth we've seen in the million dollar suburbs, that something is brewing in the Canberra market and we're expecting better price growth, depending on whose figures you believe that market's grown sort of 4%, 5%, some, some sources say 6 or 7% in the last 12 months. So solid growth without being a boom. Um, Canberra certainly hasn't followed Sydney into boom times in terms of you know growth well above 10% for consecutive years. That hasn't happened in Canberra, but we think it has the potential to do a lot better in 2019. So there's three cities who have similar things happening. The top end has been very strong, much stronger than the broader market. And um, I'm suggesting that that's the beginning of uh, some solid upcycle activity. Um, better price growth in 2019 than we've seen in those locations, generally speaking, in 2018. So that's one of the trends that we're, we're picking for next year. Um, better growth in Perth, Adelaide and Canberra with the market uh, revivals in those cities led by very strong top end markets. That's it for now. Uh, we'll do it again same time next week. Terry Ryder from Hotspotting signing off. Talk to you then.